Hi, I'm Ed Parco, your host of Inner Edison. I'm here today with Roy Douglas. How you doing, sir? I'm doing super. What about you, Ed? You know, I can't complain. You know, it's a it's a great day. I, I get to interview somebody. And, you know, I always enjoy interviewing people. I found that is something I really like to do. I found out I do it through my business all day long. And then I realized I wanted to talk to other people outside of my business. You know what I mean? Get to know other people and how the, what they know and how that can relate to our listeners. So wow, it's a little, little background on you before. I mean, I know you have a best-selling book and we'll get to that. Um, but it's a little background on yourself. Well, a little background on me. I'm Rory Douglas. And uh, my beginning wasn't so jolly. I was most likely not to succeed when I was coming up in uh, elementary school and high school. I got kicked out of every elementary school and every high school, and I was labeled a troubled youth. I said labeled. Um, the reason I had so much problems in school is because I had suffered from something that was called dyslexia. I read things backwards. So whenever the teacher was given an assignment, I understood everything. I can articulate it. It was all incredible. However, whenever we did open book or tests, I came up with an excuse to disrupt the class. So that's how that happened in my life. So one day I was going down the road with my mom and my mom uh, was running late and she insisted that I read some instructions. And uh, at that point, she knew something was wrong because I was reading things backwards. And my mom is my mentor. My father passed when I was a very young age. So my mom worked three jobs to take care of that. me and my brothers. So got went to the counselors and the principal and did some tests and found out what was going on. And I overcame my disability. I always tell people you can be disabled, but you don't have to. Uh, you can have a disability, but you don't have to be disabled. And I see in, in, in society and in the world, you have people who do have disabilities that does more than people have everything, all of their faculties together, they can even do more. So that's that's my beginning. And I actually went from um, that situation to pretty much excelling in school once I correct that. And uh, now I've been in corporate America for almost 25 years as, um, as a business owner and, and, and an entrepreneur. And uh, I work corporate America also too, and achieved a lot of things. But uh, right now I'm in the financial industry and it's been for me about 20 years in the financial industry, working for firms and accomplishing a lot of awards and uh, doing a lot of amazing things. So I currently have my own firm here in uh, Southern California and uh, everything is going really, really great. But I have a passion Ed, to help people pursue their purpose in the areas of financial education. So is that what you're. Uh, that sounded weird on your side. So, um, our, I think you're, I've got an echo on your side. You do? You don't hear it? No, I hear no echo at all. All right. Let me do this. Can you still hear me? Okay. Perfect. Okay. I got it there. All right. So, so when you're saying about you helping people with, I guess, financial literacy, what did, what did you, all right. So you went from high school, you must've went to college. Yes. Did you go to college? Yeah. All right. What did you study in college? In college, I studied communications and psychology. Actually, I switched majors to business. Okay. I just, for people to understand more of your background, because I know you're a business owner, but did you go into like the uh, financial fields of understanding finance, you know, that financial planning field? What kind of field, I mean, did you go into? I'm you know, just trying to understand. Initially, I jumped off into corporate America and I worked in retail for quite some time. And I actually went from uh, a management to upper management to regional manager. And but my passion always was finance. So I ventured off from retail and then I started to actually uh, work for firms, financial firms. And uh, every time I worked for a firm, I, I pretty much went from the bottom to the top. So I knew I had something there. And uh, after having so many years up under my belt in the financial industry, I decided basically to start my own financial firm. So therefore I can target middle-class America and give them some financial education to help them uh, to have money for a lifetime versus a lunchtime. Because you feel that the middle America is what's left out. Is that what you're thinking? Um, you know, well, I, I hate to say it this way, but Americans uh, who are struggling every single day, those who are disenfranchised, those who are shut out, and then those are in the middle class uh, are pretty much totally neutralizing today in terms of the wealth gap. 
So right. my my passion is for uh, the poor and, and the downtrodden and the middle class to to give them financial education, so therefore they can actually uh, help them help their lives and, and and grow. And what I find is is that you know doctors have a language, lawyers have a language, and the rich and the wealthy has a language also too. And uh, the average American is not getting the information that I give because it's really not taught in school and it's not taught in college. So that's that's my passion is to actually give the average Americans financial education to help them. Because right now, just so you- right now in America, okay. can you you can believe this? This is incredible that the average American is one to two paychecks away from being homeless, and one in three Americans carry credit card debt. The average American family cannot even handle a four hundred dollar emergency, and I think that's a shame by being in one of the wealthiest countries in the world. But yet, people have money problems, and people pretty much debt is a way of life, and it's happening because of a lack of financial education. Yeah. I see that in my business with a lot of people um, doing the credit card issues where they can't afford to buy anything because they, you know, they want to buy everything on credit. And then now they have so much debt, they can't get out from underneath it. And I think that it's important to be educated on how to utilize debt properly if you utilize it at all. Um, But um, for my background, real quick, just so you know, I might lost my dad at 12, Harry cell leukemia from Agent Orange. He was in the Vietnam. And then so single mom, you know, two kids, the whole nine yards. So I totally understand. I came from the bad side of town. I was expected not to succeed except to be a blue collar worker. You know, that, you know, the same kind of, you know, I, I acted up in school and it wasn't just because I was, I wasn't dyslexic. I just didn't know how else to deal with school. Right. And then I ended up going to the Navy, got my bachelor's and master's while I was in. And so then I started my own business. So financial literacy is very important for what you're talking about because, if it wasn't for where I came from, I should not be here today, right? Wow. This is where I'm at with my business and stuff because of I was born the other side of tracks, right? So I under, so it's important. So what I'm hearing from you is exactly what I want to get more in detail on because this is where I came from, right? I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I didn't have any of that kind of stuff. My grandparents were, they had a dairy. So they were poor people. So I totally understand. Yeah, and it's funny, I actually use my setbacks as my superpower. Mm -hmm. And I firmly believe that uh, there's never any losses in life. There's only lessons. And you may come from a a bad background per se, but there's a lesson in that if you can learn from Mm -hmm. it. And unfortunately, a lot of us, uh, you know, we, we become part of the system. We, you know, those people who are incarcerated and a lot of things happen. And I think it's so much greatness that's in our inner cities they just need mentors, uh, people such as yourself and myself. And that's what my passion is. My passion is to, to reach back and to help those individuals who are disenfranchised, those individuals who need help. And it you know really doesn't matter um, color, kin or creed. But the bottom line is, I think it's greatness inside of everyone. And that's what it's all about. I totally agree. Sorry, we're on the same page on this. You're not changing my mind. I totally agree with everything you say. It's all right. Um, but uh, because I mean, you're, you're, as it with our, my, I'm going to put this, my kids, right? My, I was there for my kids. My wife was there. She's a nurse at Kaiser. She's got her degrees. I have mine. We, you know, we're like, unlike when we were kids, my wife and I, we didn't have that, right? My wife grew up in, her dad wasn't there. Her mom was an alcoholic. You, you know what I mean? So we have all these excuses, but we utilize that to help us grow in life. Right. Right. And, but you can have, and that's, I think it's very important to take what we've learned and go with it, but you do need mentors like you're talking about, because if you don't have the mentors, it's really hard to get there and it takes a lot longer. And I didn't realize that until I was in my late forties to figure out that I needed a mentor and a coach to get me further in life because there was nobody there to tell me that. Exactly. And then that's great that you said that because I would tell you this also too, Ed, that, you know, when uh, you when you do have those uh, those setbacks or when you were a kid and you had all those challenges um, and a lot of in a, in a lot of cases, you got a chance to really, really spend a lot of time with yourself because you were not the one that was most likely to succeed. So you spent a lot of time with yourself. And what I find today is that a lot of people, most people spend more time outside of themselves versus with themselves, because what happens is when we start off, our parents may have. Uh, something that they want us to do. Or, and I find that most people don't even really, really know 
uh, what they really have inside. That's why I think that having a coach and a mentor is important because I personally believe that once you find your passion, you'll find your purpose. I totally agree. And, and I came across a long time ago, your why I think you're, you find your why later. It's not, you know, right now my why is to do this. Well, no, I think you find it along the way of figuring out what you want to do and where you want to go in life. But without a mentor, it, it you know, it's like someone said, if you didn't have navigation on your car and you didn't know where you're going and you didn't know where you're at, you're getting nowhere. You're it's the same thing without having a mentor. You're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. But I, I, I really believe that success is often found in a pile of mistakes. And that's what it's about in life. We're going to make mistakes. Things are going to happen. Uh, but I really think that uh, people such as ourselves, we have an obligation to reach back because right now, when you look at America in general, most households are being ran by a single woman and, you know, the male figure is not there like it used to be. So I really, really try to dedicate my time to try to help as many people as possible also too. So that's what it's all about. It's really all about uh, my passion to really help people. I just love helping people. That's that's where it's at with me. And I, I forget who I interviewed a while back, and they were talking about that. The more you look at helping people, the more you get back. The moment you look about a financial reason is when you don't get ahead and you don't get to where you want to be. Absolutely. I mean, what you make happen for others, the creator will make happen for you. And, and that's what it's really all about, because when it's all said and done, you know, we see a lot of people, a lot of material things in life and uh, uh, those who don't have it, they feel like, hey, when I get that house, when I get that car, when I get that career, everything is going to be OK. But that's not really what it's all about. It's not really about the necessities in life that counts, it's the necessities that count. So that's why it's important that um, people pretty much get in touch with themselves. And in today's time right now, people, they don't buy music, they don't buy books, they buy you. So I encourage people to really, really discover the greatness that they have inside of them, because each and every one of us have greatness inside of us. We just need a mentor, like you said, someone that's going to really, really come. Sometimes we can recognize greatness in those individuals, but just to help people. I totally agree, because it's not what you see out there, right? It's not the Instagram people. It's not the other people, because, you know, the perception is always wrong. 99% of the time, the perception of somebody is always wrong. Like, they have a really nice car, a really nice house. They must be really happy and have a lot of money. Nine times out of ten, they're almost going broke, and they, they're the most unhappiest people I know in my life. Uh, I always explain to people, be careful for what you ask for, because... When you get there, it can be very lonely at the top. So if you don't have the right people around you, the right mentors, the right help, then you're, you're going to be lonely. So you're going to be miserable and it's going to be the worst thing. So I think it's very important that you plan whatever you're doing going forward so you have those people in place. So speaking of that, let's go back to your financial literacy. Because um, is that what your book's yeah, about? My book is, is about financial literacy. It's actually um, an entrepreneur's blueprint. And right now, I um, encourage people to really, really think about becoming entrepreneurs. In other words, the average millionaire today has about six strings of income. And the average American has two jobs. And there's something that I call 40, 40, 40. The average American works about 40 hours a week, works for 40 years, and then tries to retire off of 40% of the income. And most Americans go back to work. That's why the need of financial literacy is so extremely important. What's the name it's of your called book? called Cracking the Rich Code. And it's actually uh, inter currently an international bestseller. And uh, along with myself, uh, Tony Robbins, uh, Kevin Harrington for ABC, The Shark Tank, and Jim Britt, which is a life coach. And all of us together, we collaborated with this book that's currently an international bestseller. And Cracking the Rich Code, once again, it's not about being rich, but actually telling those with less financial education the, the knowledge of the rich and the wealthy, giving it to the common person. So therefore, they can help their, themselves in their lives and, 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 and start to prosper. That's why I was saying that um, for me, entrepreneurism is really, really important because in the next five years in United States and Canada, 85 million jobs are going to be lost or displaced due to artificial intelligence, AI. We go into the bank, we see machines. We go into the supermarket, we see machines. We go into the airport, we see machines. 
And the next time you're in one of these restaurants and you see a machine, it's not there for convenience. It's there to replace someone else's job. So I think that people today have to get their shift together. I'd encourage shift. They have to get their shift together and understand that there's a new um, way of living here in America where we have to really, really either do for self in, in so many different ways or suffer the consequences. So I really like to be that, that beacon of light to go out and tell people about what's coming, uh, what's happening in the business world. And I encourage people to become entrepreneurs, uh, not just have the nine to five mindset. It's nothing wrong with having a job, but a lot of us have a nine to five mindset. And during the time of pandemic, we see that there's so many people that are in food lines and so many people are out there who had jobs that put all of their faith in a job. But we have to pretty much learn how to also to put faith in ourselves and do more than just one thing. I encourage people to do that. Well, I think a lot of it has to do. I remember the only thing my dad taught me was life's not fair. So, you know, you have to work to get to where you want to be. Um, I told you, you know, entrepreneurism is huge for me because I have my own business. I have multiple businesses over time. That was the only way that I was able to get to where I want to be. Um, I found a long time ago, job meant just over broke. And so you don't want to be there. So um, in your book, and you're talking about what is there certain chapters, certain things you want to talk about? You know, and that's what I was saying, Ed, um, when it comes down to to the new book, which is currently International Bestseller Cracking the Rich Code, is basically given basic finance 101 principles to help the common American understand the basics of financial literacy. Things like compounding interest, uh, the rule of 72, basic finance 101 principles. So let's stop right there. What's a, so most people don't know what the rule of 72 is. Oh, the rule of 72 is what all banking institutions use, credit card companies, financial institutions. The rule of 72, it can work for you or it can work against you. You simply take the number 72 and you divide it into any rate of return. And that's going to tell you how long it takes to double your money. So if I was to say 72 divided into four equals 18, that means your money doubles every 18 years. Now, why is the rule of 72 is, is important, so important? Because we have to really think about it. In America right now, the, the common bank, the five major banks, on average, give us minus 1%. And when we think about inflation right now in America, inflation is about 4.5%. So the bank is giving us minus 1%. Inflation is 4.5%. So we have to have at least 5% or greater just to beat inflation. That's the reason why the rule of 72 is so important, because the rule of 72 is how we receive compounding interest. And that's the only way you're going to get ahead of the game is you have to receive compounding interest. And by the way, the bank give us flat interest. So we have to learn exactly how to get compounding interest. Right. And also, that's how the credit cards work with um, giving you, you know, at 24 percent divided by 72. That tells you that they double their money. What about every three, every three, three or years? four years? There it is right there. So therefore, yeah. the way you get around that is, is we got to pretty much uh, step away from the APR and get into the APY, which is annual percentage yield. Now, the question is, well, what do I get compounding interest from? And that's some things that's inside of the book. How do I get compounding interest? Well, most of us are pretty much institutionalized to the common bank that we go to day after day within our communities and our neighborhoods. However, a bank is just an institution, Ed, that has accounts. Also, a credit union is an institution that has accounts. And then also insurance companies are institutions and they have accounts also too, but insurance companies have the highest interest on their accounts. So I always show people where to get the highest interest on their money when it comes down to compounding interest. Now, are you talking about like whole life policies, those kind of things with the insurance companies, or are you talking about something totally different? Well, uh, some, some whole life policies also too, some retirement policies like annuities and things of that sort. And there's something that most Americans don't know that, you know, if I said 401k, everybody knows what a 401k is, where they think they know what a 401k is. Uh, and you'll be surprised. Uh, nine out of 10 people really don't even know what a 401k is. Actually, 401k is an internal revenue service tax code. Their funds are kept in an annuity, but that's the IRS tax code. So if I ask the same people, hey, have you ever heard of 7702? 
virtually nobody's heard of 7702. Now, 7702 is also an internal revenue service tax code. But what 7702 says, anyone that is saving for retirement can retire, get this, tax-free, but only in a retirement vehicle. So it's a lot of things that the rich and the wealthy takes advantage of every single day that the common American don't even have the information. So that's the reason why I'm so excited to really, really empower people in the areas of financial education. Well, I mean, that's why for me, what I do is I help people build personal wealth through home ownership because for most people, they don't have the 401k, the 403b, the IRA, the other stuff. They don't even understand any of that. So at least at buying a home, they can build personal wealth, right? Because that's for most people, that's how they do it. But I don't want them to stop there. There's a lot more they should do. And I saw your finger up. Yeah, I'll give you an example, especially when you mentioned home. Um, I noticed that in my profession, a lot of people have homes. And most people, they carry debt instead of covering debt. I always tell people, what's at the cemetery? Dead people. It's called mortgage. That's the mor mortgage, which means on average, it may take a person anywhere between 20 to 30 years to pay for a home. And Americans are putting their faith in their job to take care of their home. So that's another thing that needs to be addressed in terms of learning how to use insurance to cover your home. So in case something happens to you, the home can be paid off tax free, given to your beneficiaries. So keep this in mind that insurance simply means it to transfer wealth. That's all it means. Insurance is to transfer wealth. When you think about Disneyland, it got started with an insurance policy. Did it? Yes, yes, I didn't it know did. that. And then also Ray Kroc, McDonald's, he took an insurance policy, funding funds from insurance policy to, to help start the McDonald's uh, foundation. So we see that the rich and the wealthy, they cover their debt, but the Americans carry it. The common American carry debt. So I encourage people to learn how to cover their debt. So therefore, they can transfer wealth to their family instead of transferring debt. Right. Because someone said, doesn't mortgage mean death? <laughs> well, I, I just word. said mortgage because, you know, the bottom line. No, no, not you. I just I heard that the other day. Yes. Somebody else said that's what that that's means. That's what it means like, in so many different ways. Yeah. However, yeah. the average uh, American is pretty much working all their lives to try to take care of that home and not cover that home. And right now right. in corporate America, the average uh, person keeps a job anywhere between five to six years today. Companies are not offering pensions and all of that is not like it used to be. That's why I'm encouraging people to uh, put their faith in themselves, empower themselves, uh, become entrepreneurs. It's nothing wrong with having a job, but make sure that, you know, you are you are empowering yourself and you're learning financial literacy. And as you said, your father said life is not fair. It's not fair. But I will tell you, if you if you empower yourself, if you educate yourself, um, that's where you really want to be. And I totally agree with that. But I mean, it's really important to protect your 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 household, the whole thing, so that you give it to the people, make generational wealth, not just you know debt. Because um, there are you know one of the things that I, a lot of people do is they get, like we talked about in the beginning, they don't know how to use credit or credit cards, and they get it and they ruin their FICO scores and they ruin those things that they need to build stuff. Um, so I totally agree with what you're talking about. Um, my biggest thing is I I've heard about. I had another someone else on. We were talking about whole life policies and how to borrow that money from the insurance companies. Is that what you're talking about? To, where you get the money from the insurance companies? I'm just trying to understand. I know you you want everybody to buy your book, but I th it's important for people to kind of know what they so they can go to your book and they can get the answers and say, yeah, that's in that book. I want to go there. Cracking okay. the rich code. I need to go in there. Okay, in my book, in the book, it doesn't talk about. Specifically, what me and you're talking about right now. Okay. Um, right. Because a lot of people don't yeah, know what. But we're the talking. listeners, I really wanted to give them some meat. I'll give you an example so you'll know. Now, when we talk about a whole life policy, a whole life was basically the second policy ever created. The first was a term policy, and the second was a whole life, and that came in the early 1900s. Now, the whole life is for your whole life, it has a cash value. However, it only gives you on average about three to 4%, which really doesn't beat inflation. So what we want to do is as Americans, we want to pretty much graduate and we want to 
get involved with policies like universal life policies or index universal life policies. Those policies give you more interest and they're more upgraded than the traditional whole life. Okay, so that's what you want to. Look, that's what you want to look into if you're looking into that. All right, so what in uh, what else do you want to cover that people should know about? Um, whether it's in your book or not in your book, financial literacy. Um, I know you had had a goal up into 2020 um, to hit a certain number. Have, did you hit that number? Are you going forward? Yes, in 2020, um, myself and my firm we had a commitment to educate a million Americans, and uh, we actually met that number. Uh, by actually educating a million Americans, financially educated Americans. So right now in 2021, we re rededicating ourselves to be able to educate 2 million families. That's where we are right now. So a few things that's in the book and not in the book, what I really encourage people to do. Uh, number one, I encourage people to start to look into basic finance 101 principles. In other words, Go and read everything that you can read on financial literacy, financial education, because this information that I'm giving you is really not given in school and it's not given in college. So it's important that people start to learn about financial education. Now, myself, I have a, a five week training series that I do in financial education that's teaching about estate planning, investments and things of that sort. So if people want to know more about that, they can go to RoryDouglas.net, RoryDouglas.net, and they can see exactly these financial literacy classes. But really, I'm in, I'm encouraging everyone to really, really start studying finance, start learning basic finance 101 principles. And because right now, that mindset is really not there. And, and that's the reason why I really want to push that. You did say you did have some courses. Are you putting together any courses on financial literacy more or just just what you have right oh, now? Oh, the courses that, that I'm putting on right now are financial literacy courses and teaching people. You're just broken down by trust and yeah, certain things like different that. Different classes okay. and things of that sort. And just get the young kids also too, the young ones involved with understanding financial literacy. Because right now in America, it, it's a travesty when it comes down to financial literacy and in California, we got a, a D when it comes down to financial literacy. So we got to really start uh, teaching our, our young ones about financial education because we can we can no longer it continue to pass on generations of debt because the millennials have virtually zero savings. So we're transferring debt from one generation to the next generation. So, you know, I'm trying to uh, express and show people that there are so many different ways to understand like compounding interest and understanding um, investments, understanding how to transfer wealth versus um, transfer debt. And that's that's what we're really getting across to families. Okay. okay. So, so I just, this just popped in my head. Do you have any seminars or anything you put on regarding this? Yes, yes. Right now, uh, as I was saying, if you go to RoryDouglas.net or, and you can, you can actually um, register yourself for some of these classes. One is called how to get more interest in the bank. No, I meant like, are you putting on like, I know we're in COVID right now, but do you normally put on like arena stuff where you go in and you talk about this, you know, certain things? Oh yes. Oh yes. I uh, normally I would travel out to the United States and Canada and actually, uh, do financial literacy conferences. And sometimes it's anywhere between five to maybe 13 to 15,000 people. And uh, but what I find is, is that these conferences are mainly either corporate America people or business people. But keep in mind, my passion is to, is to get to just the mm -hmm. average American. So what I'm doing on my own spare time is actually having financial literacy webinars to give people information, which are pre-recorded webinars. But you can go there for free and just listen to the information. So that's that's what I'm doing right now. Especially no, that's, that's, a, well, that's great because, um, I mean, I found that a lot of people since we've been locked up want to go to find out more information. So when they get out of this, um, because a lot of people think that, you know, that 
working for somebody is more secure than having their own business. When I try to explain to them, it's, it's less secure. You have no control over your destiny when you work for somebody else, because they could come in and say, you know what, we're going to lay everybody off. That's true. Right. They, they don't, there's, so if you have your own business you set your own goals, you have your own budget, you know, where you're at, you know, when you can build, you know, when you have, but they need special, cl- you know, you need a class for that to learn how to start a business. The problem is schools don't teach it. Colleges don't keep, teach any of that. The educational people that are out there never owned a business, you know, in college, you know, they, what do they say? If you if you can't do it, you teach or something. Right. Like that. But, I, but I'll tell you this also, but, too, something that's, that's really, really key. Uh, I always tell people it your job is what you get paid for, but your calling is what you're made for. So, so I right. challenge people to really, really tap into what's inside of them, because I tell people in life, there's only two things you're going to be doing. Either you're going to be working to fulfill someone else's vision or working to fulfill your own vision. But when you really think about it, how much time are you spending working to fulfill someone else's vision versus your own? Now, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to be willing on turning your nine to five into your six to nine. That's the bottom line, which means your nine to five is what you work for. But your six to nine could be your hobby, learning and developing your skills and eventually your six to nine can take over your nine to five. I could have swore I saw a commercial about that during the uh, Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that that's, one? That's where it's at right now. You know, you have to do it. Oh, no, you have to because you don't know what's happening, what's going to happen. You know, with we have no control over our political systems anymore. So we have to protect yourself, what's going on. So you need to focus on right. yourself. And, understand, and uh, also I, understand the importance of AI. And technology. See, right. we went from brick and mortar now to click and order. So we're in a very, right. very highly technical world. So therefore, we got to really, really arm ourselves and get financially educated because a lot of our young people are going to college at paying for an education in a trade that's going out when a new one's coming in. That's the reason why we have to right. really, really get our acts together and understand what's happening in America. Right now, you look at FedEx and UPS are about to have drones and electric uh, cars delivering things. It's a whole different paradigm, a whole different society. And as I travel around America, you see that uh, overseas, people are pretty much equipped of getting ready for these things. And here in our own country, we're not prepared. We're not ready. And, and that really troubles me. Well, you had to ruin it there at the end, didn't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I just, no, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, if you don't do so, you need, basically what you're telling them is you need to get out and do something now before, before it's, it's too late. late. And, 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 and we have the best minds right now, the best minds right now, but we can no longer tell our kids, go to school, get an education and get out and get a job. We got to change that, that psychology now. Now it's all about, hey, create a job. If you got a smartphone, you're really not that smart at all if you're not using the smartphone. So you can create a job on this phone and and you can create a job just at your own leisure. But that's where we are right now. We are gone from, as I said earlier, brick and mortar to click and order. So we have to really be prepared what's happening right now. And young people today are not getting the proper information to empower them. They have the desire to dream and and, and they have the, the imagination to do something great. So I, I, I challenge all of the listeners right now, those who are, who, are, who are looking, if you have a young one, support their dream, support their passion. Don't kill their dream and their passion because it's a new time in a new society where you can really, you may have the next, you may have the next Steve Jobs in your house. You know, you may have the next uh, person in your house, but you got to help support their dream. I totally agree with you. Totally agree. Rory, I want to appreciate you coming on today. I really appreciate that. Man, I appreciate you. And I just wanted to say that um, I love your energy and I love exactly what you're doing to take time out, uh, to have that passion, to really, really talk to your community. And I was really touched by your beginning and how you started and that tells me a lot about yourself that you're doing this to actually give back and, and help. So I encourage you, man, to continue doing what you're doing. And eventually you're going to probably have the number one podcast in America. Well, with you on it, I'm sure I will. <laughs> Come on, Ed, you have the number one podcast. Say it, you will. 
I will. I definitely will. That's my, that's my wife asked me the other day, what's my goal? I said, I don't know. My plan is just, I really enjoy talking to people and finding out what their passion is and where they're going and how that can help my listeners educate themselves and grow. Because I think it's, you know, the whole thing about inner Edison was about our, you know, our failures become our greatest accomplishments. It's okay to fail on your way to getting there. Um, but you definitely need a mentor, a coach, somebody to help you along the way. You need to get that right information because if you don't, you're going to make more mistakes than you need to. So get, you know, get out there, get educated. Just like you said, you know, find, go listen, watch whatever you can do, find out more information. So you don't make those mistakes. And even if you did, no big deal, just get over it. And and as I was saying, uh, last but least, when I was telling you earlier that, you know, people, they buy you. And I, I think that, um, you know, by you actually, you know, being transparent and saying who you are and where you came from, I think you need to let people know about that even more because that's that's what's going to really, really help people. Real stories, not the fluff and, 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 the, and the lavish lifestyle. Real stories saying, hey, if I can make it, you can make it too. Right. And, it, you know, and sometimes it takes being 27, living in Rancho Santa Fe and then losing it all to realize what's really important wow. in life. And you being in Southern California, exactly. you know what I'm talking about. So, yeah. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's important to get there with the right people. And uh, I found that the hard, you know, the hard way in life is learning that the hard way we make our mistakes, but we grow from them and that makes us better. And then we meet people along the way, like yourself, who will help us understand things that we need to understand. And it doesn't matter where you come from. It's what you put into it to get there and who, you know, it's, I would say it's more not what, you know, it's who, you know, in life, some, you know, for, and then if you don't know who they are, find somebody to get you to you that person, nail, you, hit, you know, you're only yeah. a couple of degrees yeah. away from you hit them. the nail on the head. So. Uh, I always tell people, if you hang around nine broke people, you'll be the 10th. That's guaranteed. If you hang around nine broke people. <laughs> right, right. And also, right. you want to get around people who can stretch your vision. That's where you want to go. And I'll tell you, that's what I did. I, I pretty much wanted more and I seek more. And along the way, someone recognized uh, a gift that was inside of me and helped me bring it forward. But you got to really reach out for it. And I think that today, young people have a, a lot of opportunities to really reach out for some incredible things, but we need someone to really, really encourage them and to elevate them. I think the youth are, 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 we have the best group of youth today, but I really, really feel that all they need is some guidance. Uh, They need some guidance and they need someone to really believe in them because uh, oftentimes we always are looking at the negative things that they get involved in, but we don't really, really get involved with the positive things. So I believe that uh, we have an obligation to help the youth because it's just like a tree, Ed. If you don't like the fruit that a tree produced, you don't get mad at the fruit. You got to get mad at the root. So if our kids are bad, we're bad. There is exceptions <laughs> to all those rules. Too. And there are exceptions. There are exceptions. <laughs> I agree. But I will say, what, yeah, what you have to do, though, is you have to turn off the noise. Yeah. Right. Turn off that noise that's out there that's telling us how bad we are and focus on where you want to go and who and get the right, right. people and in I'm your life. Part, and I'm don't believer. hang around just like I'm a firm believer. You know, the scripture says train a child in the way he should go or she and they will never depart. So even they may be going through phases in their life, you put that seed inside of them and uh, they'll come back and, and, and make you very, very happy. I mean, it's a prime example. I have five kids. They're all going to make mistakes along the way to figure out where they're going to be. Then my wife's going to get more mad than I will because I knew what I did. You know, I was in the Navy, but in during that period of time, I was not perfect and I made mistakes and yeah, I grew from that and, and everybody has to grow up, but understand, ask for help. There it ask. is. Just ask. There it is. That, that's the operative word. Ask for help. Reach out. And I always tell people in life, the only way you will not be successful if you fail not to ask questions. So speak up, ask questions. That's what it's all about. So if somebody wants to get a hold of you, do you have an email that they can yes, reach they out can to? Yes, they can go to rorydouglas.net, rorydouglas.net. They can get my Instagram handles, my Facebook handles, and my firm is called aquafinancialcenter.com, aquafinancialcenter.com. And also too as I was saying earlier, I'm giving free financial literacy webinar. So just go to rorydouglas.net, tap into one of the classes, listen to it, take that information, run with it, give it to your friends, your families, and your communities. 
Rory, again, thank you so much for thank being you, here Thank you, sir, today. and I look forward to speaking to you soon.